Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Islam is built on the five pillars that you worship none but the creator of the heavens and earth, that you establish a direct dial-up connection with it five times a day, pay the charity to the poor, do fast during the month of Ramadan, and do the Hajj, the pilgrimage to the first house of worship built by Abraham and from there, you're constantly striving to be the best human being that you can be. But you need your other half. And half your deen, half your way of life, is when you find that other half, that man or that woman. You come together. You're not being out there promiscuous. You're not being out there dating boys and girls and doing all these things that are not pleasing to the Creator. You came together and you got married. So we want you to stay together. Sometimes there's fights. And when there are, are you fighting within the perimeters of Islam, the way that's pleasing to the Creator? Are you fighting fair? We got all these questions and more that we're going to be asking our next guest here on The Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is the Dean. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Peace be with you. Peace be with you too. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. No complaints. How are you? Twenty years. Twenty years. You've been helping people stay together instead of letting them dissolve relationships that took years to build. You've been, you're with the, Isla, you're the director of the Islamic Cir Center of Canada, That's of right. Religious Affairs. You're also for public relations, the director for Mercy Mission. Islam is a merciful religion, it's named Mercy right. Mission. Is that our mission of mercy? What is this? You got it, we're on the mission, we're on the Mercy Mission. Mer mercy Mission. <laughs> so this topic, now that we're talking about marriage, is it true, I opened the show, is this half your deen? And when we say deen, what do we mean? Half of our deen, meaning the deen is really everything that you do, according to the scholars, is uh, the amana. Amana is what you're entrusted with. The deen is a debt, definition of uh, linguistically, but is what you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you owe the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, when you get together in marriage, is there such a thing as boyfriend and girlfriend in Islam? You know, you test drive a little bit, hang <laughs> out, you know, get your own apartment and just test the waters and it doesn't work out, switch, go to the next. Or, you know, marriage is the key if you want to get together with man and woman. Right. Before I get to digging your, you know, uh, pressing you on some other very important yeah, questions. There, there is. There is such a thing as a boyfriend and girlfriend in Islam. I know you're shocked. But we'll call that a halal boyfriend and a halal girlfriend. Halal, <laughs> permissible. <laughs> permissible. Under the pretense of uh, being engaged, of course, with a mahram and so on. So Islam does not deprive you the, uh, the opportunity of getting to know one another before you get married. So it's not uh, a surprise uh, or something that you have no choice uh, before you get married. Of course, there are steps that uh, we ask the brothers and sisters to do if we have the time and the, and the opinion comes up. We will tell him what to do before you get married, but are we allowed to get to know one another? Yes. But boyfriend and girlfriend, as we know it here in the West, of course not. But we turn that into a positive. We say we do have a halal boyfriend and girlfriend, and inshallah permissible under an engagement with a mahram, inshallah, where there's no khalwa, where you're not sitting together alone. I'm not talking about just physically, also on the phone and chatting, and inshallah you'll, you'll understand what I mean by that. Now, again, just one more thing. I just remember I got an email. I got an email from someone, and they said that, you know, everything about Islam makes sense, but I just can't wrap my, my mind around, you know, not being able to date. I, I can't wrap my, it doesn't make sense. How are we supposed to get to know each other? Before we get married, then you don't like someone, and then you got married, and now it's too late. You're married. What do you tell the people? You deal a lot with the youth, and, and you're asked these questions, I'm sure, all the time. How do of you course. answer it? It's the number one uh, question we get, the gender relations. What can we do? What can we do? Can I have a boyfriend? Can I have a girlfriend? Which is really normal, because this is what Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said. The biggest fitna uh, that I fear that I've left with you is uh, women. So I understand how the brothers uh, feel, been there, done that. We're not going to deny him. And Islam does not deny him the fact that you should have 
uh, a beautiful wife, or you should get to know one with the intention of getting to know, you know, do it. But let's do it properly. Now. We don't do it like knock on the door and uh, Rapunzel throw down your hair and, you know, there's uh, Samson and Delilah and Romeo and Juliet and go singing stories and all that stuff. These are fictions. We, we stick to our Quran and Sunnah, inshallah. Yeah. So Islam does provide you with that. But how do you do it is the proper way to do it. Knock on the door, you know, and come to the homes, according to the Qur'an, through the gate, through the door. Not the back the door. Not, <laughs> Not the back, the back door. door. Or the window, for no. sure. <laughs> so coming through the front door. Absolutely. That's the right way. And Islam lays all this out. Absolutely. It's in the Qur'an and Sunnah, and we've been uh, taught how to do this a long time ago. And the simple fact is that if you put yourself in the father's position, yeah. you see the difference is a father comes in, a man comes uh, up to you, knock on the door says, I want to marry your, your daughter. He will open up the door, he will tell people about it. But if you uh, come from the back door, nobody will tell anything about it. You'll be ashamed of it. You won't tell anybody about it. So there is a major difference, the same as a cat. Yeah. You give her a piece of uh, food, it will eat in front of you. But if she steals it, it will catch it and run away. So let's do the right thing and build a relationship and build your home. Uh, and build your, your marital relationship on the proper way to become a strong foundation as opposed to you playing, you're paying the price later. Wallahi, I had a couple in my office that said, I want a divorce. The wife wanted to divorce the, the brother. And we asked her why. She said, because we had a, uh, you know, previous relations, inappropriate relations before uh, the marriage and she couldn't see the brother anymore to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 trustworthy, that you know he couldn't uh, do things the proper way and didn't do it according to Quran and Sunnah. So now she disrespects him and doesn't want to stay with him anymore. So you know whether we like it or not, we have to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you allow, start our uh, relationship in the proper way to please God Almighty. And of course, we don't worry about the people because if you please God Almighty, Allah will be pleased with you, and force people to be pleased with you too. And I certainly tell the the opposite is true, of course. And I tell the sisters, please don't be a statistic. If the brother is asking you to do things behind your father's back, he's not a mean, he's not trustworthy. He's not the one that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Though he knows already that he, this is wrong. It's a yeah. behavioral issue. And we know that, that uh, being, uh, doing all these things are un, un, is not permissible, it's unlawful. So now the brother has no religious background. And among the conditions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is asking, he says he has to have khuluq and deen, he has to have moral contact. And he has to have a religious background. So if he doesn't have the religious backgrounds and trying to play hooky and hooky. you know go <laughs> or whatever it may take, we say that that brother is not the right brother that uh, you want yeah. to be with Ukhti. This is amazing, amazing because, you know, again, before we get to the main topic, this is usually the agenda of man. The guy doesn't have that fear of the creator of the heavens and earth. He's trying to get something that, you know, uh, you can only have in marriage. And women get naive a lot of times, don't they? And they listen to these sweet words, and next thing you know, you're just a statistic, like you said. Used and abused, you're yesterday's newspaper, it's old, and he's had his fun, and you've been just a number now. Exactly. It's the reason uh, we say this is, uh, when you look at the research, you'll find out that men are physically based. Women are emotionally based. So if a brother has uh, a little bit of a sweet, uh, you know, <laughs> talking, you know, groovy and all that, the guy is know, like, uh, he knows what to say. The, he will say, you know, I love you, honey, and all these things. And all of a sudden, the sister goes, ah. You know, she wipes out, and uh, I'm yours. <laughs> and we, you know, he's got her. And that's what we say, you know, protect yourself, Ukhti. And we're saying that this is a brother. You know, what you do will be done unto you, right? You may have a sister, your, your own daughter. Somebody will do the same thing unto you. you. If you don't want anybody to do that to your own daughter or your own wife or your own sister, don't do it to anybody else's. Yeah. Uh, so this, it takes two, obviously. Yeah. Tell me the hadith, please, please, for the brothers out there, and they just have this desire. And you know what? The same way that that brother came to the Prophet some, and he said that, you know, would you excuse me, I like to, what did he say, fornicate? Yes. What did the Prophet, how did he respond to him? Yeah, he said the same thing. He says, I want to become a Muslim, but uh, I, you know, I have too much, you know, lust, whims and desires. This sexual thing, the urges, uh, I can't give this up. So, of course, the companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them, were angry and they want to, to get him. So, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has the art of da'wah, the best way for propagation. He knows how to read people. He knows the keys for every personality. So he says, uh, ask them the same question. He turned the table on him, something that he can relate to. That's something that's tangible. He says, would you like anyone to do that to your, uh, to your daughter? He got angry. Would you like anyone to do that to your, to your wife? He got angry about your mother and so on. So he went down the list of the, of the female uh, members of his family. He says, of course not. So he says, all of us are the same, Yaqi. 
So everyone that you're doing for anybody else's sister, it must be, you feel this is your sister in Islam. How could you? Would you accept that for somebody to do it to your, to your member of your family? If you don't, then don't do it to anybody else's family because it's a promise. What you do will be done unto you. Amazing, amazing. And that's why Islam is protecting the family, protecting the man and woman from this corruption that's going on. And who knows best, the creator of the heavens and earth and marriage, that's the key. You want to do it, do it God's way, do it Allah's way, marriage. And we're going to come back to talk about when couples do get married the halal way, the permissible way, and then they have disagreements. It's normal, it's something that happens, but how do you deal with it so you don't break the home? We'll be back with more with Sheikh Ali here on The Dean Show. Sit tight. To save one life is as if you've saved all humanity. Show kindness to your parents, just as they cared for you when you were young. Give in charity of the good things you earn. Even a smile is a charity. Explore the real values of Islam. Call toll-free 877-WHY-ISLAM. Order your free copy of the Quran today. Back here with Sheikh Ala, and you got a lot of experience. We just talked about, just touched upon what Islam, and Islam simply means is the same way of life of all the messengers of God, that complete and total submission to the one God, the creator of all that exists. And a Muslim is one who does that action of Islam, of submitting his or her will to the creator of the heavens and earth, and he's laid out a whole system, a game plan from A to Z, how we need to conduct and live our lives so we can have peace, with the Creator and peace within ourselves and peace with the environment and our surroundings. So marriage, when people do it the wrong way, it become a statistic, get used and abused. So now people do it the right way and they get married, man and woman. Conflicts start to happen. You have some kind of dramas. So fights, we call them. How can people, if they do fight, is there such a thing as fighting fair? Of course there is. Uh, and the, uh, the real role model for us is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <laughs> And before we even get there, uh, it would be very naive to, to, to say that uh, my marriage is going to be like a smooth sailing and we're not going to have fights. The best of creation, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had issues with his wives. May Allah be pleased with all of them. And they were the best. So we have to keep things in perspective, but how to act on it is important. We, Islam does recognize that you're a human being, you get angry. Uh, it's normal if you actually live with someone for a long time. We're no angels, we have no halos on our head. But we have differences, but how to turn these negatives into positive and how to celebrate the differences is very important. And the number one rule is you have to understand the different language that everybody speaks. So you have to recognize that you're speaking to a woman, and woman is emotional as we mentioned before. And the sister has to understand that she's speaking to a man, and the man is physically based. So we have to decipher the hieroglyphics between the two. In order for us to, uh, to use the prevention is better than cure method, we have to have this open line of communication. We have to understand the different languages. We have to have the preventative measures. We have to look at the proactive analysis. We have to look at the root cause analysis. All these things are a lot of things to, to say with a few minutes, but if certainly, uh, hopefully we can leave you with some of the keys that you would be able to use in just in case that you do have any arguments, which is normal in a marriage life. What are some of the do's and don'ts? Okay, people get in a fight, and now you're, you're praising the creator of the heavens and earth with your mouth, you get in a fight, you start cursing. Is that, uh, for example, a don't? Right. Uh, the brother, he gets out of control, he can't handle the emotions, so now again, he freaks out and he'll say some things out of his mouth he shouldn't say, and mean things, and then it, it just creates a worse situation than better. So give us some example that you've seen in the 20 years that you've been dealing with right. these issues, some of the basic do's and don'ts. Absolutely. First of all, uh, before you actually get into uh, any uh, discussion, I use the word discussion, 
uh, make sure uh, that you have a goal before you sit down. What is the purpose? What is the goal for this uh, discussion? So if your goal is to prove that you're right and everybody else is wrong, we, it's not a good start. So we know that a true believer stops where they find the truth. So you're there to do what? To look for the truth. If you're, if you're wrong, you have to submit to that. We don't live in denial. We have to submit to uh, this, the will of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula and what Prophet Muhammad sallam had told us. There is a list of do's and don'ts. So the first thing is to make sure that you don't accuse, you don't go in there offending anyone. Automatically the walls get up. If I go in there, it's you that, and, and again, we know the, the story behind the finger, one toward you, three toward you, and it like, looks like guns. So as soon as you start accusing the opposite, uh, you know, your spouse, you're basically putting the, uh, the walls up. And that's not the idea. So what we're looking for, we're looking for something that is uh, to correct. So it's a behavior correction, not the person, because you say, I love you, honey, but there is something about this behavior that uh, we need to change. So you are good, but the behavior is unacceptable. That is a good start. But as soon as we start saying, you are the one that's doing this, it's automatic uh, non-starter. So that's absolutely on the do not list. When you do, so we'll do the opposite. So ilm khilaf the knowledge of the opposite. If I say don't, then the opposite is true. So when you sit down, have a, a, a game plan in mind, a road map, and make sure that you have a, something called KISS. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So we don't have too many on the agendas. If a couple comes to me in the office and they said, you know, I see the red coming in their eyes and their, you know, their, their posture, their physical, they want, they want to go to war, I said, okay, sit down, let's, let's talk about it. And I, I give him a piece of paper and we do something called the Wheel of Life and the uh, LP. That it's like a life coach. You take him one step at a time. But first I ask him for one thing and one thing only. What is number one on your list? So let's work on priorities. So if you sit down with a couple, first of all, it says, why are you here? You must be here for a reason. Okay. So uh, then they tell me I'm here for one, two, three, four, and they start saying, okay, I put the stops on. I could please tell me the number one on your list. What would, uh, if you change about this guy, you would be happy. The number one thing, if this guy does, you'll be happy. I asked the, the other brother the same thing. What if she does uh, that would change? You'll be happy. So they give me one thing. From there, I tell them to stop. Let's work on this first. And let's put a game plan. I want you to be become the part of the solution, not the problem. We don't fish for faults. Everybody has faults, but how can we help one another? And the key word here is the do's is to complete one another. Do not uh, compete with one another. This is a major uh, issue with our brothers and sisters nowadays. Unfortunately, everybody comes with a scoreboard. You know, I do this, he does this. It's not that, ya akhi. It's how we can help one another. It's not because of this, you know, I'll do that. Because shaitan plays against you 24-7. That's his job to break you up. And we know the hadith, and when shaitan comes in, he says, you know what, she did that to you? What? She means she doesn't respect you. <gasps> respect, and by the way, sisters, number one on the man's list is respect. If the man is not respected in a certain place, he doesn't want to be there. And number one on the sister's list is love. That word that we can't say very much, I Allah help us, wallahi. Even the best of creation said it, ya akhi. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad says, Rusik to I was blessed by her love. So we can work on that, inshallah. So these are the, some of the do's and the do, uh, the do nots, inshallah. We continue. We, we want people to go to credible people like you. People, when you do have a conflict, you go to someone who's going to try to push you to keep working together and give us techniques, advices. So should couples, when they do, are there some do's and don'ts as soon as you get an argument, let's say the brother, he's going to you know, his high school friend to get advice, and then the brother's like, man, man why, are you just, why are you wasting your time? Man, go get another. Or she goes to the sister, or even it could be the in-laws, you know, the parents. And even when they have good intentions, they're not people who maybe be deducing you know, the advice from the Quran and the Sunnah, they end up even with this good intention giving mm. bad advice. Do you see this happening? Is this a do or a don't? Absolutely. But uh, you have to understand, if you have a problem with the car, you go to a mechanic. Mechanic. Right? So please, brothers and sisters, you know, taqillah. Yani, if you're Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, in dealing with your spouses, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa akhadna minkum mithaqan ghalida. They've taken from you, meaning that's the, the, your wife's taken a stringent oath from you. The, the Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with them and all the, the Sahaba, the companions, he says this is the stringent oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken from what? With the verse, it says, 
uh, hold them, treat them with righteousness. This is ma'roof. Deal with them in righteousness, ya akhi. Because you have to understand that when you say, when you put the hand of the guardian's hand, he says, I accept marrying that sister. According to the Quran and Sunnah, that's a stringent oath. It's not a lip service. It's not words you say. And you see of her, what her father didn't see of her. So this is the ghalid. That's the stringent part. So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula and make sure that we treat them with kindness. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Rifqan bil qawarir, with the vessels, these are glass vessels. Again, going back to understanding the differences, that women are emotional. So you have to deal with that and make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, is the one that over, uh, overwatches you and deal with them accordingly, inshallah. We're going to take a break, and God willing, we'll be back with more here on the Deen Show. Sit tight. Whatever Allah commands you to do, you need to do it. Islam has tolerance and mercy and compassion. To know that Allah, you know, will forgive you as long as you do what you need to do, as long as you turn back to Him. Islam is a system of mercy and compassion. And it is for the best benefit of all of the people that surround it, Muslim and non-Muslim. This is the Dean Show. 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 Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about fighting fair. If you have a fight, do it the right way, the way that's going to, inshallah, God willing, keep the family together instead of breaking it apart. Please continue on with some of the advice you were giving us, Shay. Sure, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was talking to Aisha radiallahu anha and Umat Majmina, even he knew he recognized the fact that even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَمَنْ يُنَشَّأْ فِي الْحِدِيَةِ وَفِي الْخِصَامِ غَيْرُ مُبِينَ They raised them to do the decoration, decoration, lurement, to beautify themselves. But when khisam, when, the, when the argument and quarreling, غَيْرُ مُبِينَ They're emotional. Their defensive mechanism is, you know, they, they start crying and so on. We're not generalizing, of course. It's not to offend wallahi anyone. But the facts are there. Man is a little more on the harsh side. So when we do this, we know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa took Aisha off the hook. When she, uh, the, the story is, is long, but just to come to the chase with the a topic we're talking about here. When uh, she was uh, walking after him to go to Baqir, it was her night, and he came back, found out it was her. You know, she was doubting in certain things. She was jealous and thinking that he was going to another and so on. He says that, uh, do you not trust me and so on uh, for the, just the paraphrasing, of course. And Aisha radiallahu anha said now, oh, she knows that she's on the hook. So what happened? She said right away she changed her mind. <laughs> she wanted to change the subject, the topic and says, what do I say, O Messenger of Allah, when I go to that, uh, the, the, the grave or the cemetery? He says, yeah, Aisha. You say one, two, three. He didn't say, aha, uh -huh, you're trying to change your mind? No, don't do that, and, uh, and so on. So he knew that he, was, he wanted to give her a break and make sure that we, uh, we do the same thing. And the most important part, Ukhti, if you want to discuss anything, please listen to Umm uh, Talha. When, when she had uh, her son die, uh, when her husband uh, was on a, on a journey, when he came back, even then, she didn't tell him right away. So I'm telling the sisters, please choose the right time to discuss issues. If your husband is coming from, from work tired, he doesn't have the mental capacity, he's not prepared, the environment is not right. So please choose the time and the place for it. And now, of course, the story is known, but just to remind ourselves that she came up to him, what'd she do? She didn't tell him right away. It's not like, uh, how you doing, honey? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Oh, yes, uh, welcome home. Your son died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what did she say? She beautified herself. She lured, the, the, she dimmed the lights, she prepared the food, she had an intimate relations with him in the morning. In the morning she told him, gave him an example, a parable, that if somebody entrusted us with uh, and, uh, something that left with us and come and ask for it, our neighbor, wouldn't we not give it back? So of course, just astawdu Allah fidnik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lesson learned here, that she knew now what we talked about before, the same points that we're going back to. A man is a physical being, so what did she do? She looked after his physical needs. She beautified herself, took the pain of hunger away, the whims and desires, they had the intimate relations, lowered the, 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 uh, the light so the environment, psychologically he's at ease. In the morning after everything and the pain of uh, unrest is taken care of, she paved the way nicely. He was now ready to, uh, to listen and understand. And of course, the rest of it was history when he told Prophet Muhammad and so on. And Allah granted him a better righteous child. 
if anything people can do now we're almost out of time so a lot of these key points we're just brushing upon it just a tad bit there's so much more this topic is so important because marriage I mean you got good homes you're gonna have good societies broken homes broken societies so uh, you mentioned something going to a mechanic mm -hmm. if you have a car problem right. so if people are at the edge now you know what other and last closing mm -hmm. comments and advice for those people who are trying they're having some difficulty shaitan's there in the mix he's trying to break the home mm -hmm. so you can have broken societies right. should they run towards their imam should they run towards the scholars people who are going to try to really give them these tips and advice so they don't go towards mm -hmm. you know uh, someone else who's giving them wrong advice right well, uh, first of all, we have our, our goals as though, first of all, we get admonished like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has mentioned, you know, give him wisdom, talk to him nicely, remind him of Allah, remind the Quran and Sunnah, turn your back, and the other option, of course, is not, it's not an option there that you don't have to take. Or a, a garden from her family, a garden from your family, come an arbitrator. See, these are issues that we can go through stages, inshallah, but first of all, make sure that you look at the bag of your wife and the bag of your husband. Look at the good things that they have. Don't look at the bad things. Nobody's perfect. Then look at the good things. It will always outweigh the bad things. Don't tell her I want to divorce her because I don't like the way she combs her rabbit hair or I don't like the way she squeezes the toothpaste. These are the things that are, 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 are rational. Like Umar al-Khattab slapped the man when he came up to him. He says, I want to divorce my wife. He says, why? He says, I don't fear her or love her anymore. What did he do? He slapped him. Do you think that the homes are built just upon love? There's much more than that. We have a message. We have uh, children. We have a goal. We have our boat that we have to get to safety. And the boat in this life is the trials. You will have high winds and high waves. Rest assured. But work together to get this boat to safety. And safety is Jannah, inshallah. That's it. That's it. Beautiful advice. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Pleasure as always. May God Almighty, the Creator of Allah, reward you. You too. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Some wonderful advice. Some wonderful advice. We want to keep the homes, keep the families together and not break them apart. That's the easy thing to do, but you got to work hard. It's easy to break, break, bring something up from the bottom, whatever it is. You got to work hard towards making that building. It's easy to tear it down. Don't tear apart your families. Go towards qualified people, counselors. Go towards turning back to the Quran and Sunnah, to the creator of the heavens and earth and live by these guidelines. If you're going to fight, fight by the guidelines that have been sent down from the creator of the heavens and earth. And with that said, we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you.